As for what's going on in Barrow, uh, this drama with the whales has captured the world's attention. But in Barrow itself, not everyone seems as excited. They are alive, but it's not certain how long the three California gray whales can survive. The two weeks under the ice have taken their toll, their breathing more labored, the exhaustion from fighting the current. The cuts on the whale's beaks have opened further as they search for a passage that won't be open until an ice-breaking barge arrives possibly late tomorrow. Yesterday, natives and marine biologists worked to keep the two small holes in the ice open for the whales as temperatures stayed below zero. The plight of these whales is a compelling story, but to the city of Barrow, a community that hunts whales for subsistence, this episode seems to be generating a lot more attention outside than inside the village. Do you think it'll work? I think so. I hope so. At Barrow's Top of the World Hotel, NBC Network News works on its Eastern Time Deadline, a 1 p.m. satellite feed for NBC Nightly News. The story has brought network competition. ABC is in town as well. CBS and CNN scheduled to arrive late today. All this attention, but for many of the 3,500 folks who call Barrow home, the story in their own backyard is not that big of a story. She didn't even pee for, for a couple of minutes, maybe. I heard about that. I, I don't know how far it is from here, though. I heard about it today from my husband, and I didn't know they were out there trapped. For the last time when I heard about them was two weeks ago. I didn't know nothing about them. Some people just don't know about Barrow, and, you know, I guess this will help them realize where Barrow is, because, you know, they hear some things about Barrow, but they don't really know where it's at. We're back now live in Barrow. We should mention that the whale captains in Barrow are not among the disinterested. Uh, they held a meeting Saturday night to set up work details to get those chainsaws out on the ice, and they've been doing that uh, intermittently uh, for the last couple of days. There is word that a ditch witch will be brought out to the ice by the whales uh, tomorrow. That's, there's just a rumor of that. Uh, we can't confirm that, but uh, that ditch witch apparently uh, going to be uh, trying to break up the ice uh, in advance of that barge. Again, we don't know exactly when that barge uh, will get here. Joining us now is uh, Cindy Lowry from uh, Alaska's uh, Greenpeace, the Alaska chapter of Greenpeace. Cindy, uh, what is Greenpeace going to be doing uh, when that barge gets here and uh, leading out the whales? Well, once the barge does get here and clears the ice path, we want to make sure the whales move on out into the open water. And so I'm having some uh, gray whale sound recordings sent up tomorrow and then also a person that's done a lot of interspecies communication I think I'm gonna probably have him come up on a flight tomorrow with his um, playback equipment which is needed to play the sounds and drop them in with a hydrophone mm -hmm. there's been a lot of cooperation oil companies Greenpeace you're not uh, usual allies how would you explain that well I guess it's just has to do with whales and people really like whales and I think it's one of these issues that everybody can be on the same side and so we're all going for the same goal Okay, thanks very much. Cindy Lauer with uh, Greenpeace in Alaska. As you mentioned, uh, the whales have not uh, gone out to open water. They're just spending their evening swimming that channel that the Soviets have carved out for them. And while the whales seem to be hesitating a bit, the Soviets have created one big window of opportunity for the whales. The final push, after nearly three weeks trapped under the Point Barrow ice, Freedom appeared likely for the two remaining California gray whales. A Soviet icebreaker had worked into the early hours this morning, cutting a 50-yard wide channel through the ice, just a half mile from the whales. The Russians are here, the whales are at the joining point, and the winds have blown the right way, and uh, we should do it today. The Eskimo ice-cutting effort carried on the manual work at this critical time maintaining the whale's breathing holes in a snowstorm and wind chill temperatures dropping to minus 25 degrees. The whales were swimming strong, staying down longer and surfacing throughout the man-made chain of holes. They seem to be aware that, uh, that they'll be getting out of here real soon. I'm not sure if it's instinct or what it is, but you can, you can just feel it. The Soviet icebreaker's rapid progress prompted a new strategy, ordering the ship to plow right next to the whales. Move, yeah, move! The ice would have to be cleared of everyone, the especially the media. The you guys don't move right now, I'm gonna kick you in the ass. Get out of here, right now. 
After a few hours delay to adjust ballast, the Soviet icebreaker made its next pass at the whales this afternoon, coming within just one-eighth of a mile. It was enough to bring the two California gray whales their freedom.